Welcome to my podcast, Une Blonde en Norvège. This show is usually in French, but today it's a special episode. I have the pleasure to speak with Thea. She is Norwegian and Norwegian teacher, and we will give you a lot of tips to learn this language. Hi, Thea. Welcome. Hi, thank you. It's so fun to be on your podcast. Before starting with tips to learn Norwegian, can you tell us a bit about you? About me, yes. I'm a language teacher, but I'm also a writer. And um, I was born here in Norway, um, not in Oslo, but in Kristiansand, which is in the south, a small city. And I've been traveling a lot in my life, and I've always been working with languages. Um, I've been living in Italy, where I also studied languages. And I lived in Germany, in Berlin. Uh, but yeah, now I live here in Oslo, and I started working at Speak Norsk, this school, uh, two years ago. And I really love it because I get to meet people from all over the world every day. When I decided to move to Norway seven years ago, it was because I fell in love with this country, mm -hmm. culture, people, everything. So I knew I would have to learn Norwegian, but I must say that I thought that it would be easier and faster. Yeah. We will talk about it more after, but first, could you talk a bit about the language itself? I think it's a beautiful language and I love to hear it, but it has some specificities like two different writing languages, for example. Yes, it has. This is very particular for, Nor for Norway and it has to do with our history and our dialects because what you will discover when you come to Norway is that people speak very differently in, the, in different cities. Yes. Um, <laughs> and um, this has to do with um, the country and the history before we got the internet and radio and planes and cars, it was um, difficult for people to talk to each other. So this is an important reason why we have so many dialects in Norway. The language would develop differently in each place without the changes spreading to the rest of the country. Um, and the dialects are stronger in Norway than in many other countries where the majority might speak a standardized spoken language, right? Which is also similar to the written language. But in Norway, the written language was for a long time Danish because Norwegian, no, Norway and Denmark was one king kingdom. And so in school, the pupils had to speak a kind of Norwegian, Danish, Danish standard spoken <laughs> language. Yeah. So this was, this is the history before 1814. We were yeah, under Denmark and had a Danish king. But then when Norway became independent in 1814, which is very uh, a, day, a date and a day that is much celebrated in Norway, <laughs> the national day for independence, and um, people thought that students should be allowed to speak their spoken language, not the Danish language. And so uh, in 1878, Eight, it was decided that, that the teacher would adapt to the student's spoken language. So we had the respect of the dialects very early on. And when Norway was to build like their own national identity with what's the Norwegian art and music, we were trying to figure all of that out, like what is Norway and what is our written language and spoken language. Some people thought we should take the Danish language and Norwegianize it because we already had the Danish written language. Whereas other people, maybe, you know, this was discussed between scholars, intellectuals, writers, poets, and some people thought, no, we should start with the dialects and develop the language from there. Uh, and so there was a lot of discussions around this. It was really a strong Uh, almost like an intellectual fight, you know? And so that's the result um, is two written languages, Bukmål uh, and Nynorsk. And pupils in school in Norway, they have to learn both. Both. Yeah. And so, and it's really special. And also that we don't have like one dialect, which is the main, or one spoken language, which is the main one. You can't say to someone like, you speak dialect, so you need to change your language because you're going on television, for example. No, it's not like that. It's something that people are very proud of usually. And uh, 
if they if they like they should be represented in television media uh, children's television you can hear all kinds of dialects and this is very a uh, conscious um, move so I think uh, and also it's really fun when you go travel um, I mean when you're a foreigner you should learn what you should start with one language <laughs> or one I mean one dialect which is the one that is spoken around you but after that you will probably meet someone at work or you know in your local coffee shop who has a different dialect and you can start mm, decipher what they're saying and little by little you will be familiar with the dialects but it, and it's really fun when you go traveling around for me too you know when I go to a new place in Norway and I I, I hear their dialect it's it's really mm, something special and it gives something to it has a lot to do with identity and also maybe you know there are myths and associations tied to each each dialect so um, in the north where the climate is more rough they have also a rougher dialect (laughs) and like they swear in a different way they're much better at swearing in the north so everything is linked to the weather (laughs) i think a little bit yeah and in the south it's more like soft and um, i never thought about it uh, like this That's no, I, I think it is something to it. In in the okay. in the south, they are more like naive, and very religious. Yeah. So, for example, have you heard? If you've heard Metamarit, our crown princess, have you yes. heard her talk? Yes. She's from my city, Kristiansand. And when when they do parodies on her, like in comedians, when they are trying to imitate her, they always do her dialect. And it's so funny because they get her immediately. If you catch her dialect, you get her persona kind of. Okay. So yeah, it's like a little it's an extra edge to everything when you hear people talk their speak their dialect. Yeah. I just wanted to to clarify a bit uh, for people who are listening and uh, who are not like uh, used to uh, the the two languages and dialects. You talk about uh, Bukmol and Ninoshk. So Bukmol is the most common uh, writing Norwegian that we are using, like in Oslo. And when you are learning Norwegian, most of the time you are learning Bukmol. Yeah. This is the, yeah, I want to say the main language, but I can't say it, but it's, it is the most common one. <laughs> no, I, I was, I was about to say it, but I said, no, I, I, no, I, I don't Yeah, know. no, it is, it really is. And it's uh, what most people use. Um, and it's what you learn when you come to Norway. Uh, so, and it's also the one that is closest to the Danish written language. So you, if you learn this, you can probably also learn, uh, read Danish, which is quite cool. Yes. <laughs> But um, Nynorsk is also really nice. And we, I sometimes give my students a poem in Nynorsk okay. because it is very, uh, it is very beautiful. Lots of poets prefer to write in Nynorsk and uh, a lot of writers and poets they master both languages uh, just as well and they might choose what what suits their book you know or their what they want to say and what they want to convey and we have one publishing house which only uh, publish books in Nynorsk Um, and it's kind of funny because uh, they choose, you know, sometimes when they buy books from other countries, like, I don't know if you're familiar with the works of Elena Ferrante. She's an Italian uh, writer, novelist, and she writes a lot about um, dialect in her book. It's, she talks about the Napolitanian dialect. Um, when Norway wanted to buy these books or the publishing houses, they were everyone were trying to get these books translated to Norwegian and the Nynorsk publishing house got them and they translated them in this beautiful Nynorsk and it really suited the books because they they were always talking about the dialects in that book and so all every Norwegian person who wanted to read the book had to read Nynorsk so they were kind of forced to me too I I usually for me it's easier to read Bookman but I had to read Nynorsk because I wanted to read those books so it's always this it's like an extra aspect to everything that we have these two uh, languages it's really interesting and really fun but when you come here as a foreigner you can just it's enough if you learn Bukmol and probably you will understand Nynorsk too if you come across it in the newspaper or something it's not that different. Bukmol and Nynorsk are 
uh, to writing languages, but we often make, like you said, the mistake to to say you are writing a dialect, or so it's you are writing uh, Ninoshk. Yes. And we 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 often mix the spoken languages and the writing languages. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But no, you are just using a dialect. Yes, it is, and Ninoshk is based on some dialects, uh, but it's not one dialect, um, and. I think also Bukmal is not like the Oslo dialect. Uh, we just have these two languages, written languages, but how if people speak, uh, it's quite different from how it's written. So nobody speaks exactly like, like the written language. That's also why Norwegian may be a bit hard to... Um, to pronounce or it can be hard to pronounce the words if you only read it and that's why we f we focus a lot on speaking from the first very first lesson here at the school we start speaking because if you get stuck with the, the letters and yeah try to read with exactly how it is it doesn't work nobody says you know how you say i in norwegian that's yay but no and it's spelled j j e G. So for me, if I was to really read it letter by letter, it would be Yeg. And Yeg. nobody says that. So Meg. it isn't. <laughs> yeah, Meg. But um, but some people say Egg, which is the <laughs> Ninoshk. Uh, yeah, the Ninoshk word. So, but it's not, I mean, we just have a lot of diff dialects. Um, and then we have those two written ones. And one is more tied to the Danish way of writing and the other one is like has uh, dialects as their starting point. Is, is it possible to, to count the, the dialect? How many dialects can it be? Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I think there are so many. Uh, it's a regular question. Oh yeah, it is. How many dialects? Uh... <laughs> I don't. I don't have the answer to that. Somebody must know it. Uh, but every every time I ask the question to to a Norwegian friend, yeah, or they 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 reply there are as many dialects as there are towns. Yeah, yeah, and even not only towns, but like those tiny places where villages. People, yeah, <laughs> but I guess we have a few. Um, main dialects and then you have the variations yes and for me it has been and it's still <laughs> the main difficulty in the language because if you are studying bookmol with the um, the dialects that are uh, used around you then you you feel like you are comfortable with the language and you feel yeah. a bit more confident and say yes that's okay I, I can speak now and and you just take your car you drive two <laughs> hours and you try to speak with people and you don't understand yeah. anything yeah in the beginning <laughs> but if you stay there for a few days you might so but but some some dialects are are, are really difficult for yeah. example for me i live in tunsberg so in westfall or telemark yeah in westfall the dialect i think it's really easy maybe it's because uh, i learned it like this yeah but in in telemark like indre telemark dialect. yes <laughs> oh. indre it means so the internal parts yes those are really yes, hard it's not so far from where i live it's like two hours driving no, but true. it's really difficult especially when you go to their place because if you stay in if you're in oslo people might adjust a little bit i do yes, that for example right. because i have a dialect but when i speak to elderly people <laughs> I tend to switch to a bit more like the Oslo dialect because I know that they are used to that tone because it's not only the um, the words that change it's also the the tone right the, the melody, melody. And, yes yeah absolutely. and they are not like tuned in to my melody so <laughs> I, I you are not on the same it. frequency <laughs> we are not <laughs> so I think people do that a lot more if they have a dialect here and if, if you say like excuse me what did you say then they might repeat it in a bit in a different way but if you go to their place they're gonna insist on speaking their dialect they're not gonna change it because they also they might feel embarrassed because they have their whole identity tied to their dialect so they don't they don't really know how to speak in any other way which dialect do you think are the most difficult to understand um i think Olesund is very particular Olesund, it's a beautiful place. Um, it's very special how they speak. But for me, I can understand everything very easily. 
At work, I have colleagues from everywhere in Norway with different uh, dialects. Yes. And they told me that sometimes they have to lower it uh, a bit because even for Norwegian, it can be difficult to understand. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. For some, it can be, I guess. But, you know, I'm into languages, so I always... I'm good with languages, so I understand dialect. <laughs> but <laughs> not to brag. <laughs> but I think for, if you never heard, like, one special dialect, then you... Yeah, maybe you find it a little bit hard. But I think my... My philosophy is that you get used to it. Um, but what happens when you work some in a place, maybe you, everyone gets a bit more similar to each other, like everyone adapts a little bit more. And um, that's natural, you know, that you start using the same concepts and everything. So it's really hard to, to stick by your dialect if you're working in an environment where everybody speaks another one. It's I think it's very common that you just want to speak more similar to the other ones. Um, but this differ, differs a little bit. Some people are like really uh, decisive. They don't want to change their dialect at all. And some people who are really good in languages who really have like them, the language ear, we call it in Norwegian, if you really have this ear for dialects and languages that you can, you can change it so some people actually master maybe three dialects and they change it after where they go yes i noticed this when i when i was talking about this with my colleagues and i i said yes because now we are speaking in norwegian and you are really easy to understand and he said yes but it's because i i i switched so i said okay can can you uh, say something in your in your dialect and he said okay now i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> yes have students from A1 level, which is very beginner. Yes. What is the most difficult for them? I think what is always hard when you start, it's just to make the, these new sounds, um, to say hello and my name is, and the first um, construction that is a little bit different from your language, like maybe my name is, is quite similar, but then you have, as soon as you ask someone, Have, how long have you lived here? Um, the answer to that, you need a different construction because you need the past and the grammar. And as soon as you have something that is different from your, from what you're used to, the word order, you know, then then it starts to get difficult. <laughs> so we we quite uh, early on. I mean, the very first thing we do is like introduction. Um, hello, hi, hello, and just say these over and over and we like how to each introduce other, yourself and how to introduce yourself and say your name um maybe where you're from and your language um but we quite yeah so we, we start also with the alphabet what we do here in our school is we have two hours of grammar where we focus on how to construct a sentence and to learn the alphabet and the sounds yes because it's three new letters in norwegian yeah it is we have the beautiful ö, ä, <laughs> <laughs> um and uh Oh. And O. Oh. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of uh, languages have the same sounds, but they don't spell it like that. Like in Italian, for instance, O would be the O. So they, they know the sound maybe from their own languages, but they don't know the letter. So of course we write them and we write them with different words and we say them out loud together. So what we do, I think... When you start a course from the very beginning, we we start to pronounce the letters and we, and the sounds. The pronunciation is uh, is not like so difficult, but uh, uh, it has some challenges. <laughs> yeah, it has some challenges, and and especially when it's tied to the written language. So you, it's as we talked about, you can't just read it off the paper. You have to know how do I say this word? And you have to look at the teacher saying it and then read it. And then we always make everyone read it out together. So we use a lot of 
uh, we use our voice from the beginning here. We always talk a lot and we try to make people unafraid of talking because if you just study it um, and you sit at home and you just read it, it's not going to do the trick. You have to really use your voice and talk. And what we do in the beginning from A1, we start to really um, ask people about their interests from really early on, like hobby, you know, va add in hobby. We ask them, what is your hobby? And we look at pictures from different things you can do, your interests, what are you interested in? And sometimes these words are not so different, you know, like football, you know, understand what that is. So <laughs> yes, that's true. It's a lot of common words. Yeah, and music, you know, bands, like groups and artists. Um, and where do you like to travel, you know, your vacation? Where do you like to go? So we, we really early on, we start talking about who you are, what you like to do. And um, we start sharing these things. And also your job, what, you, what is your job? Or what is your dream job <laughs> if you don't have a job yet? So I think what we try to do is just start speaking and using the language. And this is part of our method because uh, maybe you know this, that uh, Speak Norsk started as a language cafe. That was the whole idea or the whole beginning of everything. It was Husan, our founder, Husan Rod. She had a language cafe because her colleagues in her former job would ask her, Husan, how, do you, how did you learn Norwegian? You speak it so well. Can you teach us? And she said, yeah, yeah. You just need to speak about something that you're interested in and something that is relevant to you. And you need to speak. Don't only look at the you, paper. You need to use the language. Yeah. So if you're going to the bank and you want to ask them, this or let's say you're in this situation and you want to say this how do you say it? and she would use like role play and really fun texts that are funny she would laugh with them and make it fun yeah basically <laughs> make it relevant interesting and fun and and not so scary and people would really come to this language cafe until it was full and the cafe owner said, listen, you have to get your own place because this is too big. And so she did. And so you have too many people. <laughs> yeah, you need to start your own school. And that's what she did. And she designed the logo Speak Norsk, which is also funny, the speak, which is English, Norsk. So it's like combining, you know, just like you don't know everything, but you can still speak. Right. So. That's her philosophy, I think. And she hired people that was in her, that liked her way of doing it and liked her way of thinking. And the students are really lively and energetic and um, they get to shape the teaching the way they want. And also after their class, they shape it, um, they adjust it to their classes. And we have really small classes. So we do what the, what the students are interested in and we have them talk, but also write. That's a really nice way, I think, to, to learn uh, a language because in some schools you are uh, starting with grammar and studying text and stuff. Yeah. And But at the end, you can't Freely. Speak. You can't speak freely without the book. Yeah, this is a trap. That's really frustrating yeah. because the... the the point of a language is to, to speak. Yeah, it's typical that people go to a class and they learn everything. When they go out, they just switch to, yeah, English, right? And to English, yes, absolutely. Yeah, or to the, yeah, some common language. And when they go out at night and they meet Norwegians, they don't really hear the language that they were taught in class. Uh, but we do that. We focus a lot on, yeah, dialects, slang, the, the way people actually talk, even with a mix of English sometimes. Um, Norwegians do this and we don't, deny, we don't deny it. We don't teach them like how to use English words in Norwegian, but we, it's, it's okay. And what we do is we, we do have grammar and we do have homework and people really need to study, study the grammar because it's a, it's a quicker... It's just a quicker way to understand the system. It's like a code, you know, you need to just get this in. And we really have them learn by heart the verbs and the adjectives and everything. But when we are done with grammar lesson and they have done lots of exercises and we've been explaining things on the, on the board, then we put away the grammar books and then we read something fun 
and we listen to something and we talk about that. And I would never, if some, if my students is in the middle of explaining me something that they really want to tell me and tell the class, I would never stop them and say like, hey, your grammar wasn't correct. It's not the point. The point in conversation class is to, to communicate. So maybe after the students have been talking for a while, we will say, hey, guys, remember this when you say, you know, this thing that you have to have the verb here, not in the beginning or something. Uh, we can remind them of the grammar rules, but we are basically when we have, when we're done with grammar, we, we focus on speaking and the grammar will come. You know, once you have all the puzzle puzzles and the pieces, uh, you, you can... You don't have to keep on focusing on the grammar. It will just come on its own. It's difficult to figure out where to start and what to start with. Mm. Because I tried to learn uh, a bit of grammar when I started, but not so much, I must say. Mm -hmm. And then I learned a lot of words, so I was able to speak. Yeah. But yeah. then I was making so many mistakes uh, that it was a bit strange because I was around... Uh, B1, B2 level, but I was making beginners uh, mistakes yeah. because I didn't learn grammar. Yes. It's also something that I would recommend is that don't like focus on the grammar, like only mm -hmm. do it, but start with it uh, anyway, because it will help to, to, to build uh, correct sentences. And then after you will learn new word and to like to build up your vocabulary. Yes. But it's really important because for me, I had to learn uh, grammar after. Like yeah. when I was around uh, almost B2 uh, level, I had to learn A2 yeah. <laughs> uh, grammar because uh, I, I didn't start with this. Mm. Yeah, it builds on each other. Like you learn some grammar in A1 and it builds It fits perfectly with, with what you're going to learn in A2 and so on. So everything is tied together and it's such a tight system. Um, so I think you can, get a, you can get on in Norwegian and speak and have a good vocabulary, as you say, just by, I don't know, having a job and talking to people. But once you start seeing the system of grammar, it will just open up to you in a different way. Grammar is all about the details and you might make yourself understood, but if you just by, by speaking like the street, I don't know, learning from television and the people around you, but if you have the grammar down, if you really focus on it, you will just, it's like you have this magical um, boots <laughs> that help you, help you move quicker and understand more. The first grammar is pronouns like me, you, or I, you, <laughs> and then the word order, and then you have verbs and conjugation of verbs. But what is different from, from for Norwegian is that verbs are the tenses, like the time of the verb is hard, but it doesn't change after the person as it does in French, for instance. So you would just say, and in English, I have to, in English, I have to learn, I am, you are. But the Norwegian would just say, jeg er, du er. We have er for everything. So easy. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in that tense, so easy. But then uh, we have the um, uh, nouns. So every, all, all, All things have uh, a gender, and usually you have, or in many languages, you have only two gender genders, the feminine and the masculine, whereas in Norwegian we have three, right? We have the neuter. So, yeah, we, we quite early on we learn about the nouns, and every time you learn a new noun, uh, for example, if I learn uh, the um, what is table in Norwegian, or what is... Um, Um, a tulip and tulipan, the flower. If I learn the name of that flower, I'm like, I have to be curious and say, okay, what gender is it? Is it, what is the article in front of it? Is it feminine or masculine or neuter? Is it en, ei, eller et? And so once I learn this, I, I can also learn how to use the same wor word in determined form. So if I want to say, a tulip, I say it in a certain way. And if I want to say, look at that tulip, then I have to say it 
uh, according to gender or gender i have to know the gender <laughs> so yeah this is a detail for me it has been one of the the biggest challenge yeah <laughs> uh, like yes because i i i made the the big mistake and it's um uh, i really recommend to the listeners who are learning norwegian who or who who will learn norwegian uh, mm-hmm. soon start with learning words with yes. gender be please. aware of it yeah <laughs> be, be, yes be aware of it because i i, I didn't yeah. do it and and then still when i was around b2 niveau uh i was still making mistakes like this yeah. and and it, in norwegian it's big mistakes uh for example if you want to say like you said uh the house in norwegian uh, it's hus but it's et us so in a sentence it's hus yes. and it's a big file to say uh husen yeah uh, so I, I was making those kind of mistakes yeah. and and then I had b- because at this time I already had like a, a big vocabulary yeah but I had to learn everything again yeah oh <laughs> with the gender so I had to start all over again and I took a, a new uh, notebook and I wrote everything every word with yes. the gender but I, I felt like I I I spent so much time mm. for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so please, if you are starting to learn, learn it with the gender. Yeah, oh, that's such a good advice. Because I guess some people, they would just go on and they never really learn the gender. <laughs> they just have their own way of, um, of uh, using these words. Um, yeah. And still now, sometimes I, I'm like, uh, okay, is it uh, an et? I, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, uh, wait a bit. Okay, and I and I'm trying to to guess with yes. the sound because when you are used to a language, it's really mm. strange. Then if you if if it's not, the, the I correct know it's like gender. a little bit funny. But I do that in Italian too when I speak. I I sometimes don't know if it's masculine or feminine, I, and I just guess, and people will correct me then <laughs> because it just sounds so funny to them, and it does in Norwegian too, and especially when you when you speak about yeah when you conjugate it or when you speak about it in the determined form. So if you say that yeah as you said who said that house then you need to know the ending um but there are some people who don't pay attention to the gender and also they don't pay attention to the sentence construction and this is like a multi ethnolect or I don't, i don't know if it's called that but it's like you know the, it's a mix i think you have that in every big city or every yeah in most countries probably in in um Paris there are some people speaking like their own way of of uh, French mixed with like influence from lots of other l- languages and this is almost like a kind of slang and it's really cool some people do it and they actually master both they can really standard Norwegian but they can also speak this other um kind of uh, ethnolect i think it's called in norwegian yeah kebab nosh yes i heard about it <laughs> you heard about that and uh, so it's funny but but yeah it's really nice if you start to paying attention to it and just learn them and and you don't have to learn every single noun because there is some kind of system if you when you get into it you realize like okay all words that are in this category that ends with skap for example at selskap they are usually neutral and you just get that after a certain point you're just okay but you can still make mistakes and uh, yeah if it's like a word you never heard before uh, even norwegians can do that i think all female words you probably know this uh, can also be used as masculine words so it's not like a big mistake or something if you if you don't know i would go with that masculine <laughs> one that's what i did actually I, i i thought i will not learn it yeah i will just use n for <laughs> <laughs> everything yeah but it, 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 it's it's not, not always working, working no no <laughs>
we talked about the dialects and, yeah. and now the gender. Pronunciation can be kind of tricky <laughs> in Norwegian. Yeah. Uh, for example, I would go uh, for uh, words like uh, have uh, letters that we don't say. Oh, yes. There are a lot of letters that we don't say that are only there. So it's, it, it can be tricky. For example, the word uh, night or evening, it's uh, yeah. fell. Uh, in Norwegian, but it's written a gveld exactly. with a, a, a d yeah. at the end. You you don't say it never. No, it's like no. gveld, but it's really not natural. For example, we have the word mange, which means many, and we don't say mange. We say mange. Yeah, but if we have the word no, and yeah, it's a letter G in there. If we have the G in a different word, for example, ye to give. Ye, we don't say gi, we say ye, and why is that? So yeah, we have all this uh, pronunciation. Yes, like the the u, uh, yeah, o, and it can sometimes u, be and u, and, yeah. So it's difficult uh, because it's the the letter the the r with the 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 round on the, on the top is is say o yeah. in Norwegian, but in French it's the same sound than the yeah the u. yeah exactly. So for for me o and uh, the the a with the round is the same yeah, sound yeah 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 <laughs> and for us the o it can be both u like a closed one and it can be o <laughs> just like the o right that's what you meant it's difficult because sometimes o is yeah. o and o yeah. is u but when <laughs> yeah, when is that you know i think what, when we learn this um we we learn this through the reading so when we have conversation class um also grammar but in conversation class we always read a text and the students prepare it at home and if they don't know if they don't remember how should the o be here how should the g be here then they just uh, make a note and then when they come to class they ask and we read it out loud and we really listen to each student and we correct them so and if it's something that is difficult we just repeat it and we ask it again and again because learning it's all about repetition yeah, so if we have a few words on the board and people are always like, oh, is it this or this? Well, how is it again? Then we always say, oh, don't be afraid to say how is it again? We can repeat it. It's good, you know. Okay, so you find this hard, let's re let's repeat it. And this differs a little bit um, after country. You know, for, for French people, a certain thing might be hard. And for people from Asia, a completely different thing is hard. So... So um, this this varies which which pronunciation rules we we focus on it varies after each class and each person, um, but I think the key to learning it is reading, uh, and speaking and we in a and like in the first course we use a lot of the same words the same like house and home and um, school and job and you know you have like a certain everyday words. everyday words yeah and we expand from there and you will after a while you will just see the system oh they're all between you know you will just interpret the word intuitively and you will know how to pronounce it based on the words that you learned so there it's not like it seems a lot on the first lesson but after a while you will just easily be able to to read but also to be able to read correctly you need actually to know the grammar um like you said the the example with house so what we don't pronounce the the ending and um, we don't pronounce the t in husa right and we need to know that this is the determined form of this special noun in the neuter uh, the neuter form um or a neuter noun because if it's something else ending with et we might say it we might pronounce the e and the t so you need to know is it a verb or is it is it a noun so you actually need to know that in able to be in order to be able to read so it's all tied together the grammar and the um, talking we will talk about it a bit after but uh, i think it's really really important also to to listen to oh, norwegian yes. i i learned norwegian 
almost like this by uh, listening to podcast and radio yeah. and, and, and if you have the interest for that it's great because there's so many podcasts out there now so many fun things Absolutely. and you could choose something which is about the news or uh, events going on in the world if that interests you or history or a certain topic like literature or it could be um, a comedians or something fun or gossip you know celebrities whatever interests you and music that's also a big thing <laughs> yes it's a really good tip to learn norwegian by listening to and music. we always you know force this we would force something on the students one time and then the ones that love it, that love it they will go on listening to music but we always introduce all kinds of things like Audiobooks, also a big thing. Um, if you like audiobooks and listen to them, if you like that type of student, you know, who would go and... So, for, for instance, me, I love literature. So I would go and when I learn a language, I listen to like easy literature, like chiclet. <laughs> I listen to that in Italian and it's really easy because they always talk about love and things like that. Um, but yeah, so I would do that. But it's not for everyone. It's also a great exercise for yourself if you start singing at home it doesn't matter if you have a good voice you can just sing to yourself but this is so good for pronunciation if you imitate the singer and you will hear different uh, dialects yes exactly you, you have so many artists artists that sing in their dialect in dialect it's great yes. so we, and it's really beautiful yeah it is right i think so too it's so it sets the mood so We always give students lots of tips for songs and I can give them to you. I can send you a list of Norwegian artists, but you probably have already your your favorites. Um, I will uh, um, write uh, an article and, and put the link under the podcast. So if the listeners want to have all the details, they can go under the podcast uh, info or in the article. Podcast and also we do our own listening exercises here where we record just normal conversations between people um like colleagues or people friends and i sometimes play for my students audio messages from my from my friends because i have some friends that i send audio messages to and they respond to me and i ask them oh can i please play this for my class because you're using this expression and it's we just talked about this expression and uh, metaphors and pictures that you use in order to to say something and express it's an, it's in every languages but uh, yeah, it is it's really important because i think When you when you ask Norwegians if they are uh, using a lot of ex expressions, they would say no, yeah. not so much. But actually, they do. They do. They don't uh, are aware of uh, the fact that they are using expressions kind of a lot. Yeah. So it's really important because sometimes you get like all the words in the sentence, but uh, you don't get the meaning. Yeah. <laughs> So you say, okay, it might be an expression here. <laughs> exactly. I think people are not aware of that because they th they tend to think of expressions as something very... We have one expression which is like, never sell the, the fur of the bear, bear before the bear is shot. <laughs> okay. Yes, we have the same you in do? French. <laughs> With the same animal? Yes, absolutely the same. Okay, so this is so funny. We, we always have all these expressions up on the board and people have them and sometimes the the animal is different <laughs> or or maybe like the um, the meaning is the same but it's said with completely with a different image so this is fun but those maybe these ones are not so common to use i mean you can still hear them but i think what's what what is more used is the the little ones that we don't notice that are so integrated in our language for example Uh, if someone is someone is sad, we might say, "Oh, he became long. He 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 got a long face." And we don't say face; we say maske, which is like "han blev lang i maska," which means he became long in his mask. Like, what does that mean? You know? And it's so common. Are you Or, wearing a mask? <laughs> yeah. So how can you understand? I don't. I don't think people are aware of, of using it. And I think this is for every language. I don't know that, but I think it. Yeah, like little things like that that makes the language In more... French, I think we are using a lot of expressions. Yeah. 
it's a very effective way of speaking and it's more fun and more rich. So I think if, if students, and it's so beautiful if students uh, use them. I have a recommendation for that because I tried to find online what are the most uh, used expressions. I found a list and at work I checked with one of my colleagues and I asked her, do you know those expressions? Yeah. And she said, no, not really. I don't think they are used very often. Mm. So I thought, okay, maybe I shouldn't use time to learn them, but which one should I learn? And then I found a really interesting book. Uh, it's called Grise Flax. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so And good. it's written by um, a guy, Ali Mohamed. Yes. Uh, he's coming from Somalia. Mm -hmm. He wrote a book uh, about yeah. expressions. Uh, yes. And uh, I think it was because it was uh, really challenging for him uh, mm. when he, he was learning uh, Norwegian. Yeah. So it's written in Somalian and in Norwegian. So it's for... Yeah. Uh, everybody That's if you so are cool. learning Norwegian but the book is really great because I think it's really uh, expressions that are used in everyday life so it's uh, yeah. it's uh, I recommend it yes I think that's great and I can send you also the link to to an article that is tied to his book where they have a quiz <laughs> where you can test yourself how many language how many proverbs do you know do you know <laughs> I took the test actually one I didn't know okay. so I learned something new and I heard one this weekend Uh, when I was with my friends, I heard like a local one from my old town, Kristiansand. And I said, what? I never heard this before. And they said, oh, do doesn't your dad use it? Oh, my dad uses it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really fun. And it's um, usually those, those expressions are kind of words of wisdom, right? Or they can be. Um, But it's, it's also, also yeah. a, ma a mark, like when you are learning Uh, a language and when you are using it it's also a mark that you are really more comfortable with the the, the language and it's committed a, yeah a sign kind of sign of high level so it, it can be great to, to learn them I spoke to one guy and I said wow you you speak really well Norwegian um how long have you been here, la 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 and I said and then we, I asked him a little later so where do you live and he said oh I live just a stone throw away, he said in Norwegian, at Steinkast, it's the same word. And it's so cool, you know, that he said, <laughs> he didn't say like, he was beginner's level and he didn't say, I live close, he said, I live a stone throw away. I was like, oh, wow, you're really committed to this. Yes, and but that, that's the effect actually, it's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, fun and it's, uh, wow, you are using this, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so internal also, I think, for example, we have one word, Yeah, you, you mentioned Gris, Gris of Lux. That's the name of that book. And it means... Yes. Like pig's luck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there is um, something else, an expression, which is Gla Lux. Have you heard that one? Yes. If someone is a Gla Lux in your office or something, it means happy salmon, the fish, the happy salmon. And if you're that, you're like, oh, he's a typical Gla Lux. It means that he is just... Um, kind of happy-go-lucky guy. So he's just happy all the time, spreading a good mood. He's stable in his mood. He's like every office has one of these guys, right? Or in every class, you have a Glalax. So if you use this about someone, it's so internal and people will like, oh, yeah, yeah, they will know what you mean. I would go, go back a bit to pronunciation. Yes. One thing that can be uh, also... Uh, kind of tricky in Norwegian I think for me it was <laughs> and it's it's still sometimes it's the e and the e yeah so it's uh, the the i and the y yeah in French it's the same sound it's e we have only one e smiled e there are some words in Norwegian and it's just this letter that changes and it changes the sense uh, of the word so it can be difficult like tidly and tidly Yeah, it's the just one letter, but mm -hmm. it's not the yeah. same word, so it's difficult. Yes, it is. I think, yeah, maybe you know what. Uh, maybe if you have kids or if you're around kids, you will hear them say, you know, they 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 play that. Oh, we're going to bed. Good night. Uh, good night. And then it's morning, and they say, "Kikiliki." 
<laughs> it's it's like what the rooster says and they always say this and we said this when i was a child too and they say it here in oslo we don't have roosters around um but they say kikiliki daginani which means like yeah the rooster says this and the day is new <laughs> so it's rhyming kikiliki this is the y it's the e sound kikiliki Dagen är ny. Um, and with the I, it would be kikiliki. Dagen är ny. It's not the same. Yeah, so it's E and the E. Yes, but for, for us, it's it's almost, when you are starting to learn Norwegian, it's almost uh, impossible to hear the difference. Yeah. So we really? we just have to, yeah. to check what do you do with your lips. Exactly. To make the difference between a, a E and a E. Yes, you need to watch someone do it, right? You need to really see, because we do completely different um, movements with our lips. <laughs> so yes, for but, e, but, it, but you have to, to like e exaggerate the move and it can be yes. not easy to do first because mm. uh, it's a podcast so it's uh, difficult <laughs> yeah. to, to see but it, for the, the Y for the E it's, you, you really have to, to, to push the lips like you are kissing yes uh, and, but it's really for, for us in French it's really unnatural <laughs> to do this <laughs> yeah and some students are a little bit embarrassed when we do this because i i write all the words with a y with a e and i say let's say this together but and it is a little bit embarrassing to learn a new language you just want to sit there and take notes you know but you have to go out there and really make a fool out of yourself yeah and but we are all the same here like every time i have to pronounce a student's name or I wanted to show my students one time a podcast with a with a Persian woman, and she was called. It's so difficult for me. She was called Ehtesari. This girl from Iran. She was correcting me until I got it right, and I felt so stupid because I she had to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it because I never made this sound with my with my throat. <laughs> What is really difficult, I think, with Norwegian is sometimes it's the same uh, problem with the sh and sh. Oh, yes, this is true. Sometimes my Norwegian friends, they are making like the two sounds on and on, yeah. but I don't hear the difference. It's it's really yeah. hard. But that might also be because they only make the sh, because some Norwegians, they, they don't really bother expressing it correctly or some some language um, like some linguists they think it's on the way out this sh sound but we teach it to our students but it um for me for example if i want to say that something is boring like really boring i don't say shedle which would be the correct word i say oh they are so shedle I, I make it stronger by like mispronouncing it. So yeah, but we have these sounds and I think it's just important to write them on the blackboard or the whiteboard <laughs> and um, <laughs> and go with the class and have everyone really shout at the word yes. with the lips in the right form. <laughs> and we are all the same. Like if I have to pronounce a word in their, uh, you know, their language i would struggle too so we, it's and and we are all on the common ground here and this is also a part of our approach in speak norsk that we you know we might know norwegian but we and norwegian culture and history and whatever but we want to hear, hear about their um expressions you know when we talk about expressions or their uh, historical events and um these special things in grammar we always ask do you have the same in grammar like sentence construction sometimes the same is in other scandinavian languages and in german we sometimes have something in, some things in common and we always make them think about that and reflect about that and tell us you know because we can all learn about this still about pronunciation one thing that i'm maybe a bit ashamed of uh, when i speak norwegian mm. we talked about dialect and writing languages But it's mm. also two different ways in Norwegian to say the R. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's... Oh, you shouldn't be... You shouldn't be ashamed. So it's like a, a, a ruled uh, R and a R that it's not ruled. And it's a scar R in Norwegian yeah. uh, or ruled R. But it's... I, I'm not like ashamed, ashamed, but <laughs> I, I, I like to hear the Norwegian like you are... Uh, mm. uh, using it and yeah. when i 
hear myself <laughs> speaking yes. Norwegian, uh, not just about the, the accent, because when I speak uh, Norwegian, I have um, uh, a big French accent, and it's even worse than in my English. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's uh, it's like uh, it's physical for me. It's impossible for me to rule the R. I I, I don't get it. I, I, it's not mm. working. Mm -hmm. So I'm using a scar R and I know that it's okay because it's like this in 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 many dialects. Yeah. So that that's okay, but uh, it's uh, also a big pronunciation difference in Norwegian. Yes. It is. It's a big thing. The R versus the I can't R. do this. <laughs> This is for me personally, it's also a big thing because I was, for me, it was the opposite. I was born in the north and then we moved to the south where stu where people were, were using the the one that you are using. And I, me and my sister, we d developed our own mixed dialect and we would use the r sound as our parents did, uh, but with the tone of the Christian son. Okay. So I had certain words that because I Because in Christian son it's a scar R. It is. Yes. And everyone does it and it's um, or <laughs> of course everyone uh, like that's how they speak and sometimes if we were playing football and they would say say like oh dorle <laughs> dorlema they say it means like oh bad of me my my bad it means and i didn't want to say this because when i said it, it would be dorly so you wouldn't even hear the r the the r right? it's almost like a uh, hidden it's hidden sometimes whereas if you have the r it's more present also in names like if you have a girl call, called kjersti <laughs> which is a very cute girl name, Kjersti. In Kristiansand, they would say Kjersti. Ah, okay. So you can really hear the R. The R. And um, the R. <laughs> and so I would be embarrassed about this, but now, of course, where I live in Oslo, it's easier for me because, yeah, they have it. But I knew how to make the R sound. I had a French in school also, but then I removed my tonsils. You know, okay. in your throat. Yes. I removed them. And because I was sick all the time, so they have removed them. And then I wasn't that good at making that ah, okay. anymore. So okay. my French declined. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's a big sorrow. And, it, and it's difficult uh, for uh, ev everybody regarding on, on, on where they're from. Yeah. Uh, I, I have uh, really good friends uh, in Paris. Uh, yes. And they are from India. And yeah. uh, they are speaking uh, good French now. Yeah. But uh, they were uh, learning French and it was really difficult for them to make the sound R. But then, yes. but then the words were almost difficult for them to say and to be understood. For example, just the, the, the name uh, street. So it's rue mm -hmm. in French. Rue. The sound R was so difficult for them to, to make that it was rue, rue. Rue. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you are saying rue to a French, maybe it will be difficult for them to understand. Yeah. It was a bit difficult for my friends, but it was in the other way. So when I started to learn Norwegian, I, I thought about them and, and I thought, okay, I have the opposite problem. Yes, that's how we are all the same, right? My, my dad, he was... Uh living in France for a while when he was young he was like playing a, mu a music uh, what is it called playing on the streets of uh, Paris with his okay. guitar <laughs> and uh, <laughs> with his friend and when once he went to the doctor's office and they were they were calling his name and he's called Ola Dolva and he just heard like all dull <laughs> all dull and he just oh is that me you know so <laughs> it's so funny he had to learn like how to say his name in his this name different yes. completely different way still about pronunciation the yes. the, the a are are said oh oh yeah the the vowels yeah. for example my name my name is Anne sophie but mm. it's anna Anne with an A at the end and Sophie Anna. with an A at the end. But yeah. in Norwegian, it's Anna Sophia. Yeah. But Anna it's Sophia. not my name. No, right. So that, that, that can be strange because at first I said, no, but it, it's okay. I mean, it was not a big deal. But it can be a bit tricky because you are like uh, trying to get uh, into the social mm. life and learning a new language. You are in a new country and, and people can't yeah. say your name. So mm. it can be a, a whole thing that 
can be existential. a bit absolutely <laughs> existential yes. like uh, issue <laughs> but what's my name because uh, anybody uh, uh, can say my name correctly so for me with Anne Sophie it's okay because a lot of Norwegian they, 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 they ask me first uh, is it Anna Sophia or is it Anne yeah. Sophie so that that's okay uh, and Anne Sophie is also a Norwegian name <laughs> it can yeah. be so that, that's okay but for my husband for example it's really uh, it's funny and strange because yeah. uh, his name is Alain it's a common name in uh, in France but yeah. in Norwegian it's really difficult to say because you don't have the sound un yeah and it's really embarrassing for us to do you too it's like abstract for us to use this sound so we need like the Alan we need to land it <laughs> Yes, so he, he he almost has to find a, a new name because it's impossible for people to say Alain. So it's Alan. Yeah. <laughs> what is really cool in, in, in Norway is that people are really patient, understanding and tolerant, I think. And yeah. um, they are really happy to see that you are trying to speak uh, Norwegian. So it, it really doesn't matter to make mistakes. And, no. and making mistakes is, is part of the process. To learn a yes. language so it's like this for every language so uh, you will never be perfect at first and it's okay it's very okay so and as you said there are a lot of different uh, nationalities in Norway yeah. and everybody is speaking with different accent and and stuff so it's uh, yes it, it never has been a problem for me to speak uh, Norwegian with my big French accent and with my square R <laughs> So I think it's only charming. I love it. <laughs> it's nothing to worry people about. People are asking actually, where are you from? What do you do here? And it's even mm. easier to speak with people because most of them will be curious and happy to hear about your story. So it, uh, yeah. it, it it's not a problem. No, it just makes you interesting. <laughs> I think. When I moved uh, to Norway, I moved with my French husband, and uh, and then we needed to to take uh, courses, both of us. But when you are coming from Europe uh, in Norway, you don't get any help, uh, so you have to pay for everything. Yeah, and I must say that it's a big challenge <laughs> at first because <laughs> when you are starting uh, with your uh, savings in euro, it's really difficult because uh, everything is expensive here yes so it gets better once you're working but uh, you need to speak Norwegian to work but you need to work to pay <laughs> Norwegian courses so it's mm. kind of tricky and I, I couldn't afford to pay uh, Norwegian courses at first no. so I spoke English uh, I think the first three years uh, yeah, but that's a trap because I would say because Norwegian people they love to speak English. <laughs> yes, and it's absolutely not a problem in like social life, and and I, no. I did it like this. But uh, it's my Norwegian friends at sometimes who told me, "Okay, done with English now. You are saying all the time mm. that you want to learn Norwegian. We will help you, so we will speak only Norwegian now." <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, really hard and uh, tiring uh, at first, yeah. but, but it worked. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I know you can get by with English for a long time. It's expensive and um, there are some things that are not so expensive. <laughs> we can give them some tips. Absolutely. So what, what I think, uh, if you can afford a course, of course, it's great and probably... Quite early on, I would recommend it if you're gonna do a course. Um, if if you if you don't do it, you can go to language cafes in uh, arranged by library, the library, and the library in general is a great resource if you live in Norway. <laughs> so if you can go there, you can register for a library card online. And you it's don't, free. Yeah, it's free. You don't even have to go to the, and talk to anyone. You can just do it online and you can rent, um, you can stream Norwegian movies at home for four movies or shows a, week, a month. And or you can go there and get books in, they have lots of language books and grammar books and textbooks and also languages in 
if maybe this is a little bit more advanced, but if you have like a favorite book in French, you can find the translated version in Norwegian and you can read them together. Um, you can also go, you can try to find a tandem partner. Uh, there are organizations that fix this for you. So I just signed up for Oslo Language Tandem. Tandem Language Tandem is where you meet someone who wants to learn your language and they speak your the language you want to learn. So in my case, or like let's say in your case, it would be you would have to find someone who wants to learn French. And then you decide that you you can just sign up for an organization like this and then if I, they find someone for you. You just tap in what you want to. If you're a beginner, if you want a, a man or a woman, uh, young or old, <laughs> whatever your preference you I, I really recommend this because it's really, it's really if Yes. Uh, plus, it's a way when you are uh, when you just moved to a, a new country. It's a, a way to make new friends. Yes. So it, it's it's really only positive uh, points. Uh, it's free, mm. and yeah. if you are in Oslo, it's a lot of uh, uh, stuff like this book cafe yes. and tandem uh, exchange language and and stuff. Yeah. So it, it's really easy. It's really easy and you find someone who you can talk to and you don't really need to be best friends. Like maybe you might meet someone and you like them so much and you become friends and you start speaking English or whatever. But, but maybe, maybe not. You also meet some, <laughs> maybe not. And maybe you meet someone and you're like, okay, this person really wants to study and I do too. And let's just make a deal, a pact that we only speak Norwegian and maybe you go and see, watch the cinema together or you go, um, you go for a walk every Wednesday and you just you only speak Norwegian and you don't have that many words but you just force yourself and it doesn't matter if you don't show your true identity or whatever because it's just for learning so I think it's to business friends almost I would like also to give a tip to people who are not living in Oslo because I don't yeah there were uh, uh, no Sprock Cafe uh, in my town in Tunsberg so I, I started one. <laughs> oh, that's great if you're that type if you're a social type you can really do these things get other people gather people and arrange things and it's uh, also possible to do it uh, online yeah it's one of the positive things that appeared with the pandemic <laughs> definitely you can find other people that want to do the same and it's so fun because it can be you can be from all over the world all different ages different jobs but you want you have the same thing you want to learn this language and you can yeah you can if you have a language cafe you can, or like this web, I don't know if it's online, you can also prepare a little bit because people are maybe embarrassed to speak freely when they don't really have that much, you know, that much vocabulary yet. But you could prepare something. Let's say you have a topic. So now it's fall. It's autumn. It's fall. Hust. So what happens then? And what can we do? Or I don't know. Maybe that's not the best topic. Christmas is maybe better. <laughs> or it could be that you read a news article. And uh, there is also, I want to tip um, listeners about this um, special newspaper called Klar Tala. Do you know yes. it? I use it. I read it. Yeah, I think it's yes. so good. It's in use, but in a simple language. It's really, really great. I love it. It's so beautiful how it's written. Uh, they use this. They tell you all the essential stuff, but without the unnecessary, complicated, yeah, language that that journalists usually use. So you could prepare a little argument about something, a little topic, and then you can discuss this when you meet. The really good point with Claire Taller is that it's also a podcast. Oh, yes. So you also have the audio. So you, you can read the newspaper and, yes. and listen to the audio. So it's really yeah. a good way to work on pronunciation and stuff. It is. And if you find someone, I think that the key is to find someone to practice with. You could send each other messages if you don't want to talk on the phone. You could prepare something like, for example, you make a deal. Okay, every every Monday, we're going to tell each other about our weekend. And you can prepare a little bit. And then you tell your, your business friend uh, what you did in the weekend. And in Norwegian, of course. And he can respond. He or she can respond when they are ready. And then you can listen to yourself afterwards. Oh, how did I do, you know? And um, Or if you're really shy, you can do it to yourself. You can send your mess audio messages to yourself and then you listen to yourself and you can listen to your improvement. Yes, that's a really good uh, tip because I, I used to do it 
a lot like to to <laughs> speak with myself yeah and and it's working it is i think it's really good i was like pretending okay let's say i go to a job interview oh yes what would i say and and i, I was like but saying it really out loud oh, the best. and and say oh uh, i miss this word okay uh, so you search for it yes And then you repeat it when you're using it and then you listen to it and it's like a little bit fun to listen to yourself and you're like, it's something is at stake. Like, oh, this is recording. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more fun than just speaking to yourself out in the room. But you can do that too. And you can sing to yourself in your room and read aloud uh, to yourself. Really important. Um Other things for yourself, you can keep a diary. Of course, it depends like what type you are. This is not for everyone. But if, if you're a person who likes to write, you could keep a journal in Norwegian. Just like what you did that day, you know, what you have been thinking about, how you're feeling, and you have to search for the words. So something daily that you use and something that I've heard you speak about, Anne-Sophie, is the um, making put it in your schedule right today maybe it's not every day maybe it's every second day or it's every saturday but it needs to be consistent and you need to set off time um to do it it, it won't happen just by watching television it's good to watch television find a favorite show in the region yes i recommend it but you have to do more and when are you going to do that yes you you will not le learn norwegian just by uh, watching netflix no you will <laughs> understand yeah exactly you will understand maybe what some people are saying but it can help but it will mm. not do uh, all the work <laughs> no there is no quick fix it's no. proper work but it yes. can be fun and it's you have so many you learn And like you, you develop so quickly and it's there's so many uh, stages that you get to and you're like wow this was the first time I was able to order something in Norwegian and they didn't react to my accent or like they didn't react to what I they understood me so it's you have to celebrate all those little steps I learned a lot by reading and a lot of people asked me uh Which book did you use? Yeah. I started with the with uh, books for kids with almost only pictures, yeah. and then I I, I was uh, taking more advanced book, uh, yeah. and and then it was really pleasant to like to feel the improvement and said oh now I can read like. Uh, yeah. a book for a teenager so that's uh that's yeah. okay and i, I would recommend <laughs> I to listeners like two different um kind of reading that i used that i think uh are really efficient yeah the first one is to read short articles uh online or uh, on newspaper like uh for example yeah. uh, but to really stop every time you don't understand a word and and to uh, to search for it and then you will learn every every word but this process can be tiring i also recommend to read bigger books but to not stop when when you are stuck on a word because then the mm. process will be uh kind of broken and, and yeah. you will be like oh, no okay uh, I can't do it it takes too much time or but just just keep uh, reading and you will understand the word later with the context yes so don't don't stop like every time you don't know a word just read 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 yeah. and it's another process actually it's it's a, a different kind of of reading yeah. but the the this those two processes together are working the, the, it worked for me wow that's such a great advice i think i think too it's something uh, something happens when you just let go and you just keep on going and you you understand through the context that's a different process as you say from looking at a children's book and pointing and understanding each word um but i think it, you need to be interested in what you're reading at least slightly right yes <laughs> and it's maybe it's a book that you already read that you love from before um and it can also be magazines can also be fun you know we have a norwegian l if you're into fashion <laughs> or if you're into cars or boats you know and you have the help of the pictures um but audiobooks is also really great like novels stories 
in read in Norwegian, you will understand and they read it for you. So yeah, but reading and listening to books, it's really good. Also, there is online resource called LinkU and you find Norwegian and you register as a student and they already have lots of texts in there that you can read and every time like for example a fairy tale and if you don't understand a word you click on it and you get the um, translation hopefully in your language ideally in your language or okay. if it doesn't have your language but definitely they have French but otherwise English um, and then they gather like a um, word bank of your of the ones you don't know and you get to repeat them later and what's better you can also is that free yes it's for free it's like amazing i just discovered this this resource so you can also insert an article a news article you just click on the link and you insert it and then you can click on the word you don't understand and there there is a word bank in Ah. here that will find the word for you it's amazing interesting yes yeah i will uh write all those info all those links uh, under the the podcast in the info text yeah and also in the in the article so if you if you want to to check all those links uh, just go yeah. to the to the article on my website i have one more tip actually or a couple if you want them absolutely <laughs> so it's to follow uh, someone on youtube a norwegian youtuber um it could be cooking if you're interested in cooking, if you want to learn and you just listen to what they say and you you understand what they say through the context, um, most of it probably. And um, or it could be planting, like gardening, you know, or it could be going out, sleeping in the nature. We have lots of that, like wildlife. <laughs> you are wildlife. naming all of my hobbies. <laughs> Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> oh, how nice. Uh, so I can send this to you. And it could be also workout. I mean, meditation and um, yoga, but also like strength, uh, I don't know, st- st- um, muscle workouts. So follow someone and you get to know them. You get to know their dialect if they have one and their words. And after a while, you will just watch them because it's addictive these things right youtube is addictive so get addicted in norwegian and get something out of it um and the other tip what was that yeah it was if you have the possibility to uh to you have to be the type but babysitting maybe if you have someone around you who needs a babysitter and i think it's really fun for i have i have one who is german and i want her to spend time with my child because i think for my child he's four years old i think it's really fun for him to to understand that she that he understands something that she doesn't this is really fun for children that they can talk about what do you call this what do you call that you know of course they need to be able to communicate a little bit it's almost uh, children who are teaching to the babysitter yeah <laughs> one I, I i would give to is to 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 try to do social activities oh yes i met a lot of friends uh, at uh, the training center Oh, and yes. um, yeah, because you will be talking with people even if they don't become friends. But yeah. th- that helped me a lot um, uh, yeah. with like going to training places, but I mean in groups. Yes. Because then you will hear the name of the body parts, movement's name. And yeah. it's really like everyday words and it's really he- helpful. Yes, that's true. I have so many students that are part of something social because they play football or handball or basketball out here. It doesn't have to be organized sport. It can be just out on some field around you, some sports ground around you. Um, or it could be like tour so uh, hiking groups yeah we have lots of that in Norway and you can sign up for it or you can become a member of um, the tourist organization Turistföreningen and they arrange these trips and you go there and they will speak Norwegian to you (laughs) and you will learn this yeah this um, special the terminology of that sport and then you just know it and you speak it and i would recommend to do it and to be that don't be like afraid to say no i'm, I'm yeah. not speaking just uh go and try go and try uh, absolutely no shame of no. Uh, speaking a really low level knowledge and it's uh, just uh great to try and to use it yeah because it's it's the, the language is not in focus here it's actually the the activity
I often get the question on my website, how long do you think I need to learn Norwegian? Yeah. It's uh, impossible to answer to this question because it <laughs> depends on first how hard <laughs> and how often you are working. But it also depends on the abilities you have to learn a language. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are absolutely not equal on that. <laughs> mm. So I know people who learned it in like one or two years uh, very easily. And I know people who have been living here in more than 10 years and still can't speak at all. So yes. it's a very personal process. But w what would you say? Yeah, it's a very complex thing. And I often speak to my students about this too, because um, they are interested in knowing and they want to be encouraged. And can I learn it in six months? You know? <laughs> yes, that's um, often the question. <laughs> When I spoke to my students in the C1 class, which is the advanced class, I asked them. And we had um, one girl who was German and one who knew German uh, together with lots of other languages. And they really learned it quickly because it's so similar. But what, is, what is quickly? How long was it? Six months. Okay. Yeah. That's fast. <laughs> yeah. If you start from A1... And you go in our school, you go from A1 to B2, we have intensive courses. You can learn to speak Norwegian and say general things about various topics in six months. If you have like German or another language that is similar to Norwegian, which might be a Scandinavian language, <laughs> you can learn it even quicker. But I think for most people, it takes... Uh, a bit longer I am in the other group <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I would say if you go if you attend classes and you study a lot like I had one student he was in B2 and he said that he was really young when he came to Norway uh, he was a student he he understood everything he, he was following he was studying in Norwegian the lessons were in Norwegian but he wouldn't speak because he was a perfectionist and he was Greek and he was a perfectionist and he didn't want to speak until he really could speak it well and this is actually the child's way some children who are bilingual they will just wait they will speak the one language that they know and they will wait with the other one but that's a trap because because you will never speak yeah it might be a trap uh it might become like a block uh, uh or a block uh it's too hard for you to go go out there and start speaking but um I guess, I mean, here at school, I, I see that people, if they start studying from the beginning, after a year, they're quite confident to speak. Uh, for others, it might take longer. I had one student, she was from China, and she had little children, and she said she didn't, she was attending some courses, but she didn't have any time to practice, and everything was different from her, for her, and she lived here seven years, and then she started to get by. So it's so different. It varies so much. When I moved to Norway, I think it took maybe yes one year or two years to to really understand what people uh, were saying, and I had quite a good uh, comprehension. But it was almost impossible for me to speak. It was really difficult. Yeah, because when you because when you start a course, you you it goes hand in hand with us the, you have to speak from the minute you start understanding you also have to express yourself but it is very frustrating that we all understand more than we can say ourselves because it makes we understand more and people don't understand how much we understand because we can't express yes, it that's but this right. is this goes forever this is language learning it's like uh, it's with every language so that's just how it is but um how quickly you start to express yourself and feeling like that you understand most things i would say i would say it could be done in a year if you study <laughs> if, if you study yes that, that that's what i didn't do <laughs> I, I thought that i would learn it uh, just by being in Norway, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, and just by listening to uh, radio and stuff, and it worked. Mm. I mean, I, I learned the stuff, yeah. but not so much. And then I was mm. using English most of the time because yeah. uh, it was easier and and faster. But then, but then yeah. I, I wasn't using Norwegian, so it was like a, you know a circle. <laughs> mm. 
maybe when you when you go into a class you become this little child this little, little newborn and uh, you can only say a few things and make a few sounds and after a while you develop and this is really beautiful to see when we are for us teachers we see how students come out more and more of their shell and they show who they are i absolutely recommend to, to take uh, norwegian courses right away because i i got to uh, b2 level uh, like this in about three years maybe by reading listening uh, watching tv with subtitles mm -hmm. but I, i really needed courses to get better with grammar as i said earlier and pronunciation and yeah. more advanced uh, things uh, yeah. like melody and rhythm in sentences that is really important in norwegian Yes. So I, I decided to start uh, Norwegian courses uh, with Speak Norsk uh, online. And it was yeah. so motivating to see, feel and hear the difference. It's very motivating. I think you need so much discipline to do it on your own. It's uh, such a big task. But if you have a teacher who pushes you and you have students who are going along with you and you are like moving forward together, it's so much easier and it's so much more fun. Yeah, because it should be fun to learn a language. It is fun. <laughs> Absolutely. That That's what I liked uh, about Spiknosk, uh, actually, because it's a... Uh, It's a modern school yes. with uh, young teachers, very dynamic. And, uh, because uh, language schools can be uh, a bit old-fashioned sometimes. And they yeah. can use... It can be a bit nerdy. Yes, and mm. they're using like really old text and resources. And yeah. it can be really boring. But uh, when it's boring, it's difficult to be regular and to stay motivated. So... That's that's what I liked with uh, Spiknosk because I, I found uh, a new a new way to learn with teachers that were uh, explaining everyday expressions. Yes, and in funny videos, and and it's working because uh, when I, I saw first uh, um, a Spiknosk uh, YouTube video, I said, ah, "What is that?" <laughs> <laughs> because I, I don't remember w uh, which video it was, but. Uh, It's, it was funny and then yeah. it, it's efficient because I still remember it now. <laughs> yes. and, and when it's funny, you are memorizing. It's easier. Yeah. It's a lot of free video on YouTube and, and Facebook. Yeah, yeah, we have many. It's so nice. I recommend everybody to, to check this out. It's really great. The channel of Spiknosk. Yes, and they really exemplify with like, they play like a role play and yes. they, they <laughs> <laughs> teachers are very lively and very like almost giving you a little bit of a show sometimes. Yes, absolutely. It <laughs> was really fun to, um, to see, to hear and, uh, and then you, you, uh, you are memorizing stuff. Yeah. Also, it's intensive, our courses. So it's not like we are here for a whole day and it's like quite quick uh four hours usually one one day school day is like four hours so we we give it everything we have when we are there and like try to really inspire and um teach people everything we can and afterwards we everyone is like exhausted <laughs> is it the regular rhythm that you have uh, for uh, classes at Spiknosk? yeah it depends you can do weekend courses and evening courses evening classes and day classes and if for example a day a normal day course is if you're in let's say a1 you go uh, two days a week from nine to one for six weeks and then you jump to the next level a2 so it's very intensive okay so it's usually six weeks to yes, change levels. which is quite quick yes so um, yeah we go quickly and people really are really ambitious usually who go who come here I, i recommend you to do it if you are in oslo as i said i live in tunsberg so i took online courses uh, yeah. it was perfect for me it's it's really great but if i i had to to give tips To listeners, it would be, as we said, to be really regular, like to try to yeah. do one lesson a day or something. Yeah, whether it's online or you go to class, you need to do it a little bit every day, ideally, or as often as you can. Yes, mm -hmm. because I, I think it's better with uh, like 30 minutes every day than two hours once a week uh, yes. or something like this. Because when you are working on it every day, then your brain is switching to a learning process. Yeah. And it, it makes a difference. 
it does learn a new language. It's really good for your brain. Of course, it's exhausting. Like you will, in your dreams, you will speak. Like, what are your characters in the dreams speaking? What language? You're dealing with it all the time. My Norwegian friends, they told me, when you will dream in Norwegian, <laughs> that will mean that you are really into it. And I remember yeah. the first time it happened, I say, yeah. <laughs> You remember it was in Norwegian. <laughs> yeah, great sign. I was like really proud. Yes, my dream was in Norwegian. <laughs> One tip that I would give to people who would like to learn with online courses yeah. would be to to find a language partner, as we said, with a Sprog Cafe or, or stuff. Because it's yeah. the only thing uh, I think that we miss in online courses is to speak, to practice. Yeah. If you are in Oslo, it's uh, easy, as we said. Uh, there yeah. are a lot of Sprog Cafe and you can find people who want to learn uh, French or you can mm. speak a bit French and a bit, a bit Norwegian. But uh, in other towns, it can be mm. a bit more challenging. It's possible, but maybe yeah. you will have to search for it uh, a bit more. But I recommend it. Yeah. It's a great combo to take online courses and to find a partner to speak if you are not in Oslo. It is. You, ha you have to reach out and try to find someone. It, maybe it's in someone in your online class and just ask them, do you want to practice more? And um, because this is social, we can't set it up as a teacher. We can't force you. But this is what we love when students start doing that on their own and really continuing to learn on their own because uh, the, you want the same thing. So, yeah, and you can also speak online to each other. Yes, or you can chat and uh, write in the Exactly, chat if you're more uh, comfortable. Out. Yeah, Facebook, like a little message, and uh, you can give each other homework. I have an English tandem partner. No, I mean Italian tandem partner now. And we, I gave him a song, and he gave me a song in Italian, and he wants to hear my opinion about it. And I'm like, okay, I really need to prepare because he's going to ask me tonight, you know? It's fun, and it's um, your learning. Yeah. Language uh, courses can be a bit expensive. Uh, it's worth it. <laughs> I mean it, but uh, it, it can be, so... Is it possible to to have uh, financial helps or to 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 check with your boss or with your company maybe if it's possible to have those uh, Norwegian courses uh, paid? Yes, I think it's a really good idea to check with your boss. Maybe he he or she has never thought of it, uh, but maybe you are a couple of of people who would like to who who would gain from 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 attending a course so you could ask them to cover it <laughs> and maybe probably you will be able to choose your school and you can choose speak Nush because it's really fun here <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's um, something fixed uh, I heard one case which was uh, a lady from the she was a professor so she worked in the academ academic environment and she she it was in her contract that she was getting it um, support Yes, Norwegian course. So she just signed up and yeah, they, 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 they took care of it. <laughs> so I really hope it will help you to learn Norwegian and stay motivated. All the, the tips uh, we talked about and yeah. uh, that uh, you gave there. Yeah? <laughs> uh, it's really fun to learn a new language, I think. And especially when you are living in this country, because then you can use it every day. Yeah, that's a big advantage. And if you're planning on going here and you want to have a to start a little early, that's also good. You can do an online class or yeah, start from where you are. We have people from all over the world. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thea, for uh, advice and tips you gave. My pleasure. I hope they will uh, find some inspiration. I'm sure they will. Bye bye. Bye bye. Some articles are in English on my website, so you can check on uneblondeennorvege.com. If you want to support the podcast or this episode, you can become a Patreon member 